Folks, welcome back to Nostalgianomics. We gotta talk about Temporal Forces. What in the world's going on with that set? Is it a good pickup at current market price? Should you wait on it? Could it be one of the best sets in Scarlet Violet era? What in the world's going on with the singles? Are they being manipulated? Are they being bought out? Are some of them just being properly valued because they were undervalued at pre-release? Was the set actually short printed and there's, is there not a lot of it out there? We're going to answer all those questions and talk about it today. And I figured the best way to do that would be, let's open a box of it, right? Because us investor bros, we can have some fun too. We can open some packs. We can enjoy the hobby. We don't have to always be about the dollars and cents. Is that really against the rules? I, if it is, I don't care. We're doing it anyway. Before we jump into that, guys, I got to shout out Arizona TCG for being today's video sponsor. Guys, if you don't know Arizona TCG, they're a consignment service for your PSA, BGS, and CGC slabs. So if you got stacks of these things laying around and you don't want to do all the work to sell them yourself, Arizona TCG's got you covered. What's really cool is their system's really streamlined to use, but also they have this tracker down here. And you can literally see what it would cost you to sell the card yourself on eBay or have them sell the card for you. So let's just say you're selling a $150 slab. Well, it looks like you'd take home about $124 yourself selling on eBay, paying a 13.25% fee plus the $6 shipping and shipping materials, where you'd actually take home almost $130 for Arizona TCG selling it for you and doing all the work. And so they might make sense for you to check out. I'll leave the link in the description in the comment section below. All right, guys, let's get into this box break and talk some temporal forces. Let's jump into it. So temporal forces, I actually like the set so far. I think one, it's a strong set. It's got a lot of high dollar hits and a lot of high dollar chase cards. I also think it may not have been short printed, but it's definitely being eaten up faster than um, the other sets have been the last few. And I also think that a lot of the singles are actually going to hold up better than some of the other sets, especially sets like Obsidian Flames and uh, even Paradox Rift. And... I know there has been some crazy price movement on these singles lately, right? Um, you know, obviously the Morty's Conviction shot up to $150. And uh, it's still right now the top hit in the set over the Iron Crown, which I don't know if that's going to hold. Um, here's the thing, right? It does have the Gengar, right? So it does have the Gengar in the card, although the actual card is Morty's Conviction. It is just a male trainer. Waifu trainers have been top hits in sets. I don't know if we've seen many male trainers as top hits in set. Just the way it is, guys. You know, girls run the world, right? Um, but uh, so I'm not too, too sure if Gengar, you know, hey, we got the Gengar. There he is right there. I'm not so sure if Gengar just being on the card is technically going to carry, you know, the card enough to be the top hit in the set. But it could, right? Because it is Gengar. I mean, I think everyone is kind of in agreement that if they would have put an SIR Gengar in that set, it would bar none be the top hit in the set. Um, but because they left him out of the set and it's just really a um, full art Gengar and then just that Gengar in the Morty's Conviction, I think that's the issue with it. You know, the Iron Crown is probably going to stick around where it's at. I do still like, you know, the, the Raging Bolt and uh, what is it? Gouging Fire, Walking Wake. I do like those. You know, I know a lot of people aren't into the whole Skyscraper, uh, you know, Raikou deal, but... um. I think they're good cards. And one thing I do like about them is the hit rates in this set, right? The hit rates in the set is much harder than the hit rates in, you know, the, the earlier Scarlet Violet sets where it seemed like there was at least one, maybe two SIRs per box. Whereas now it's maybe like two per case type thing, which is good. You know, it's going to help hold the values of the SIRs a lot more than before. Um, and then personal experience, I've opened up, you know, a few cases, nothing like some of the, the bulk openers. But uh, I've, I've experienced a lot better print quality, which, you know, it's, it's great, you know, for collectors. Obviously, that means the PSA 10 chase may not be as valuable with these cards. So it may be more about just, hey, we got a Meltan. It may be more about just getting the cards themselves and less about chasing the grade like it is in some of the other ones, like, you know, the Paldea Magikarp, things like that. But uh, I still think it's good. Um, as far as the product right now, uh, picking it up, right? Well, here, before we get into picking it up, let's talk about like some of the, the buyouts again, like the Ghastly. The Ghastly was an obvious pump buyout, you know, manipulation shot from the teens all the way up in the 50s, had confirmed sales in the 50s, and now it's back down in the, uh, 
I don't know, teens, high teens. And uh, that was kind of where it started before that pump. And so, you know, with that being said, yeah, you know, it, it, it was probably bought out. Yeah, the Morty's Conviction is probably getting getting some buyout pressure right now. But uh, there's also a possibility the Morty's Conviction was just undervalued a little bit and it may actually settle somewhere up there with some of those top hits far, further than it was up before. And uh, hey, we have to marry Don. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, but I do think uh, I do think a lot of the cards, you know, how they were a lot cheaper pre-release and they did all shoot up. I don't think all of them were bought out. I don't think all of it is being manipulated still. I think the set was undervalued when it was released. And I think when people saw the hit rates that were harder and they did actually like the cards a little more than they thought they would, I think it did just push the prices up uh, organically. And I do expect a lot of those prices to hold. So that's what, that's how I feel about the actual cards in the set. Um, let's talk about the sealed products. No, I do not think there was a short print. Um, you know, Eli Pokemart USA, who I get a lot of my product from, he confirmed that, you know, with his distributor, they didn't pull back any of his supply with this set. You know, he got everything he asked for and everything he wanted. And so, uh, you know, that, that's one thing. Other other people with other distributors or other stores, they were saying, you know, they got uh, their allocations cut and they got less than they wanted. But it, it still seems like it's available on the open market. Um, hey, we got the Wug Trio. It, it does still seem like it's available on the open market pretty, uh, you know, pretty well priced. I mean, I think you can still find it on eBay right now for like 95 a box. And then maybe like uh, around that same price per case, maybe you get a little bit of a discount buying by the case. TCG player is still holding up pretty well. It's like a hundred plus a box. The cases are, you know, in the high 500. So, you know, maybe like mid to high nineties a box by the case. And so, uh, you know, it's holding up better than other sets have. Um, and I, I think the uh, the market's liking it. I mean, I know on my box breaks I have on Thursdays, it's still always a very uh, highly requested set. I'm not seeing it as uh, as I don't know what what pull the Morty's conviction, bro, bro. How about that, guys? Morty's conviction, not even halfway through the box. Oh, and it's minty. It is minty. I don't even have any sleeves over here. Oh, I do. Here's one. Oh, man. Morty's conviction. Got to get that right in the sleeve. Okay. Well, that box paid for itself. There we go. <laughs> Just talking about it. So, uh, I mean, guys, look at that card. I mean, I, I get it. Probably being pumped up a little bit, right? Probably being a little bit, there's maybe a little manipulation because it's a new set. There wasn't a lot of supply. It was easy to do. But that is still a beautiful card. I mean, you can you really tell me you don't like that Gengar in that card? Here's the thing. If Again, going back to the whole the women run the world thing. If that was not a male trainer, if that was some some hot waifu with that Gengar, I think it would probably be number one card and stay number one card. But, you know, it, it may still drop. I still love it. That's a crazy hit. Wow. Incredible. Uh, I don't even know what we were talking about before that, guys. Um, okay, the boxes, the boxes. Yeah, I mean, you guys know how I feel about modern boxes. You know, over time, they're going to rise. A lot of people don't like to buy in too early because they don't like to have, you know, what's known as like dead money sitting in the boxes because, you know, uh, the boxes are going to take a while to rise. There could be reprints come. And hey, Iron Bundle or Iron Boulder Bundle, Iron Boulder EX. But, uh, you know, there could be reprints come and people don't want to um, have to go through a reprint. They have to worry about dollar cost averaging down and having to worry about being behind on the early stuff they bought. So a lot of people just won't buy at the beginning. They'll wait and hope reprints come and hope the reprints go down, you know, as lower, lower than they are now. And that's a very real, hey, we got the reboot pod too. That's a very, a very good route to take if you want to take that route. Definitely not saying this is like a set that you need to FOMO into right now or anything. I don't think it's it's short supply or you're not going to find any. Um, but, you know, if you can, you know, find sellers that are blowing it out and, you know, they're, they're, they get down in the 80s, you know, mid 80s, something like that. I, I'm always a fan of, uh, hey, come on, camera. I'm always a fan of buying product in the, in the, in the 80s. And even, even if you have to sit on it a little longer and it, it's known as, you know, dead product a little longer or something. Hey, we got the full art scissor too. This is a pretty good box. This is a decent box so far. Am I right? Um, but even if you, you know, have to sit on it a little longer, 
very it's very limited downside risk very hard to lose when you can pick up cases in the box they're valued in the 80s and again my personal feelings i know you know everyone's down on scarlet violet and a lot of people are down on temporal forces they're already down on twilight masquerade it's not even released yet go figure that's how people are i still think this is a strong set um my kind of power rankings for it obviously guys 151 is always going to be number one in this era i don't I don't even know if they're going to be able to, you know, make a later a hey, explorer's guidance. I'll take that. It's a nice full art. Um, I don't, I don't know if they're even going to be able to make a uh, a stronger set than one fifty one. Even if the later sets of Scarlet and Violet are strong, kind of like Sword and Shield and team up set and uh, tag team sets were in Sun and Moon. But uh, you know, I th- I'm, I think one fifty one is a very clear leader right now. Behind one fifty one. I know a lot of people are talking about it now, but I was talking about it from the time it came out. Paldea Evolved is by far the strongest booster box set on the market right now. And then I would, again, this is where, you know, we might differ. I think a lot of people agree with that. Some people put Paradox Rift right there at number three. For me, from what I've seen so far, I, hey, Wugtrio, we got that nice ultra rare Terraform version of the Wugtrio. Um, I, I got to put... Temporal Forces at number three right now, right behind Paldea Evolve. I mean, I, I just, I truly like the cards. I truly like the fact that the hit rates are harder. Um, and I know, look, Paradox Rift, strong set as well. Paradox Rift for me comes right after this set. It is close, but I just feel like, uh, I feel like Temporal Forces has a bit more to offer, especially with the hard, harder pull rates than the Paradox Rift does. But Paradox Rift is after that. After Paradox Rift, guys, this is going to be crazy to say. And I know, crazy. Um, I'm probably going to put Paldean Fates after that. I mean, Paldean Fates, guys, those cards are holding up extremely well. I get it. I know it's an ETB set. It's a specialty set. It's that normally those don't do as well as booster box sets, but it's got the most expensive Charizard in the entire era, even more expensive than the 151 Charizard. Um, the Bubble Mew, that's that's more expensive than most top hits in a lot of these sets right now. It's the second hit. I mean, it's got a Gardevoir, always a fan favorite Pokemon. Hey, we got the Walking Wake EX. Um, it's got the Gardevoir, which is a fan favorite of, you know, pretty much every set. It's Gardevoir's in. It does well. And, uh, you know, it's got the Iono and the Penny for the waifu effect. It's got the, the baby shinies that people chase after. And they're actually really hard to find because there's too many of them. So it's actually hard to hit the actual one you want, like the Pikachu and things like that, Charmander, Charmeleon. And so I do like the the Shining or the uh, Paladin Fate set. I think it is stronger than, than Shining Fates was in, uh, in Sword and Shield. Uh, from there... I mean, it's hard not to go Obsidian Flames because it is a Charizard set um, above base set because, you know, base sets proceed to be so weak. I think base set could surprise us, but I'd still probably stick with the old Charizards and go Obsidian Flames and then base set. So that's kind of my power ranking for the era so far. I'd probably go 151, Paldea Evolved, Temporal Forces, Paradox Rift, Paldean Fates, and then go Obsidian Flames and uh, Scarlet Violet base set as the last one. But again, I mean, you know, depending on what price you get all those at, it, it can really change on which order you want to pick those up. Um, as far as Temporal Forces goes, guys, I mean, what do you guys think? You're, you're seeing all the cards. I'm sure you've seen the cards a million times by now. I'm not the only person that risks packs on the internet. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm sticking by what I said. I think it's a strong set. Um, yes, I've already picked some up. No, it's not all getting broken on the channel on Thursday nights. I have already set aside some for myself. And um, if they reprint it, I will dollar cost average in. It's just the reason I pick up every set now to hold on to some sealed product and kind of uh, just I plan on dollar cost averaging when a reprint comes. The issue is, is if a reprint doesn't come, I want to at least have some. I don't want to be buying in at the inflated prices if they're up to 120s, 130s or something like what happened with Team Up. I mean, Team Up just never got reprinted, right? And uh, Evolving Skies, while it did get reprinted, it never had that, that next reprint come. Everyone kept waiting for another reprint because the price was high, and they just never reprinted it again. And it kept going, hey, we got the Deerling illustration. Got to love those. But um, it just kept going up, 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 and away. never came back down. And that's kind of my fear with some of these sets is you expect reprints to come, but it's kind of like, you know, expect the worst, plan for the best. So I just kind of pick some up. I plan for a, a reprint. But if not, well, hey, at least I'm, I'm sitting on a, a good position and I'll be able to take advantage of it. You've got the old Scovillian. And uh, that's kind of, so that's kind of my method, but you definitely don't take my method. You know, 
Odds are most all these sets, if not all of them, will get reprint. You'll be able to get back in this, around the same price I did, if not better, maybe a little worse. But um, And you won't have dead money sitting there. You'll be able to use that money for other things in the meantime, like picking up more a lot. Hey, we got the Master Ball! I know this isn't the most expensive A specs, but I do like the Master Ball. This is this is one of my favorites. Um, but, uh, you know, you can spend your money on some other things, like picking up more Lost Origin, more Brilliant Stars, Astral Radiance being back on stock on Pokemon Center, maybe getting Silver Tempest cases while they're still cheap or Silver Tempest boxes while they're still cheap on the market. All those things can be done. Um, like me, picking up massive amounts of alt arts right now um, while I still can before they really run away and really get scarce um, instead of putting that money into some of these Scarlet Violet boxes that, yeah, they may sit for another one you know, year, maybe six months, maybe 12 months, maybe 18 months. I don't know. But uh, that can happen. So uh, just be careful with that. You know, understand that, you know, this is a more of a long-term game. Don't be moving into brand new sealed boxes thinking it's going to be a quick flip or a go to the moon overnight thing. Even if you've seen that in the past, it's just not how things work with Pokemon because of the print runs. But uh, yeah, guys, we're getting down to the end of this box. I don't know about you guys. This I've opened a good amount of these boxes now. This seems like a pretty freaking good box. I mean, it does seem like the hits are uh, above average, but we'll, we'll take a look at them here in a second. I, I'm happy with it, though. I mean, how can you not be happy? Oh, and we end it. Last pack magic. The full art gouging fire. Awesome. Love Ente. Love Ente. But, I mean, guys, let, let's check this out. You guys tell me if, you know, this was a, what, above average, below average box. I don't know. Feels above average to me. Let's So, total hits, we have... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 hits. 15 hits out of 36 packs. That's like three away from one out of every two packs. Wild. And it's not just crap hits. Gouging Fire, Full Art. Skull Valley and EX. We got the Scizor, Full Art. Reboot Pod. Explorer's Guidance, Full Art. Iron Boulder, EX. We got the Master Ball. Love that A specs. We got the Deerling Illustration, Walking Wake EX, the Wugtrio EX Terraform Ultra Rare. We got the Wugtrio EX, the Meridon EX. We got the Meltan Illustration, the Gengar EX, and you guessed it, baby, ending things with the Morty's Conviction SIR top hit in the entire set. Man, I need to really do more of these box breaks. That's all I got today, guys. Hope you guys are having fun collecting Temporal Forces. And uh, good luck to everyone who is investing in it or is making plays on these single cards. I'll be back here in a new one soon. I'm out.